Hey guys, welcome back to Altcoin Bus Spotlight with me, Leia Heilpan, the show where we speak to entrepreneurs, innovators, and thought leaders in the cryptocurrency and the blockchain space. Joining me today is Matty Mikalko, the CTO of DCT DAO, the company that describes itself as a gasless, quantum proof polka dot moonbeam cross chain decentralized exchange. So, to break all of that mouthful down, make sure you stick around and also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss a video. And also, let us know in the comment section below who you want us to interview next and which topics you'd like us to cover. Mate, welcome to Altcoin Bus Spotlight. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to have you. I want to jump straight in. We've got a lot of questions lined up for you. So just to start off, tell us what um, industry challenges are you guys solving right now? Yeah, so uh, basically DCT DAO is uh, the world's first quantum proof um, cross-chain DEX, right? A decentralized exchange, uh, which is uh, focusing on enhanced uh, cybersecurity thanks to the quantum proof feature, then on low transaction fees, uh, thanks to the cross-chain interoperability, and uh, basically on the cross-chain interoperability as well, that basically users who are on one blockchain ecosystem, that have assets on one blockchain ecosystem, would benefit from the cross-chain interoperability with other uh, other blockchain ecosystems. So, for example, if they are on Ethereum, they would be able to uh, access the assets of Polkadot parachains or uh, or or Phantom blockchain or other blockchains as a seamless experience. So we are building a cyber secure, uh, guestless and a seamless basically experience uh, product with with uh, this this style of experience for the for the users. So those are the main three industry challenges we are solving. So why is interoperability so important? It's obviously really hot right now and a lot of different um, protocols are focusing on this. So why is it necessary? Well, uh, it stems from the natural development of the blockchain ecosystems, right? Uh, it all started with Bitcoin, then Litecoin came, you know, some other coins, derivatives of uh, Bitcoins, then Ethereum came a couple of years after, and then basically some derivatives on Ethereum and DPoS based protocols and and so on. And the, right now the status is that uh, we have uh, quite a lot, uh, quite a lot well developed blockchain protocols, which are ecosystems on their own. Right? There is no interoperability right because people or very little interoperability because people were focusing basically the companies were focusing on building the actual protocols but not on making them interoperable right so there is a lot of stuff that is being that is built already that exists and has great performance on its own but it is not interconnected right so there are users in polkadot there are users in ethereum there are users in cardano but once i'm in the cardano ecosystem i do not have right a natural way how to or a very limited in a way how to get to the assets to how to trade ethereum assets when i'm cardano user right or mm -hmm. when i'm polkadot user. so polkadot is trying to solve this on its own right by connecting the parachains with the master relay chain but there is not really a comprehensive solution right for all the major blockchain ecosystem and of course there are new blockchain ecosystem emerging so it's a very dynamic ecosystem right so uh, basically, that's why the, the, the users do not really have the way to get naturally from one blockchain ecosystem to another one. And this is the problem we are trying to solve. Yeah, I think dynamic is the perfect word. There's so much being built. There's so much going on with interoperability. And I just think it's fascinating just to follow how all of this is playing out. But you used the term quantum proof interoperability. What does that mean? Well, uh, quantum proof or quantum resistance, being quantum proofness or quantum resistance, is a new paradigm to the to the computing. Right, right now, what computing is is it is a binary computing, right? Binary computers, right? Uh, stemming from transistors and then microchips, you know, and so on. It's all about binary, about zeros and ones, right? The the Silicon Valley, right? So, and the binary mathematics, bits and and bytes, right? But quantum uh, computing is something else, right? It is the, I would say, the natural next stage of uh, the binary uh, computers, 
right with much superior performance because it's not binary anymore uh, there are the equivalent kind of the equivalents of bits which are qubits and which have more than just two states zero and one right it's based on the quantum mechanics and uh, basically right now we are in the stage that uh, quantum computing theory exists more or less in, mm -hmm. in its basics but we are waiting for the hardware for the quantum computer to come so the situation is pretty similar to 1980s with artificial intelligence, right, when uh, most of the artificial intelligence theory was already known, but the hardware was, was missing, right? So we've been waiting till the year 2000, 2010, right, when the artificial intelligence really kicked off. And this is the similar stage right now with the quantum computing. We are in quantum computing winter a little bit, right, because we are waiting for the actual hardware. So right now, um, the best commercial available machines uh, which I have seen are about 100 qubits. Uh, in order to have a basically a useful quantum computer, you would need to have it would need to have about one million qubits. So we are not there yet. So, but what, what does it mean to making a software by making a DEX, right? Making a blockchain quantum proof. It means that we do implement uh, quantum proof algorithms, which are standardized by NIST, which is the uh, National Institute for Standards and Technology in the US, and they standardize uh, the algorithms, which are quantum resistance. It, uh, it's related to cryptography mainly, and we do implement those algorithms into the actual blockchain software. So this is the way how we are making the uh, DEX quantum proof. And of course, it's taking some time because they are going to, you know, they are, it's a dynamic ecosystem on its own as well concerning those, uh, those uh, algorithms and their yeah. standardization. So we are bringing out our alpha next year, 2022. I actually want to delve more into um, quantum computing because it's a topic I'm always hearing about. Um, you know, I talk a lot about crypt different types of cryptocurrencies and make lots of different videos and people are always sort of saying, you know, you should check out quantum computing and how that's going to play out in all of this. Um, so I'm definitely going to go on a, a tangent at some point and, and look into that. But just on a side point, you also have um, the DCTD um, token. So talk to me about it. Tell me about its utility. Yeah, so DCTD, uh, first of all, it's a governance uh, token for, for the yeah. DCT DAO because DCT DAO is a DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization, right? So enables, it enables the holders to vote uh, about uh, some community uh, related, related uh, issues, uh, proposals, development proposals, and so on. So we are going to implement this functionality in the next in the next month. So people will have a GUI, basically where they can where they can vote. So the utility is governance. The utility as well access to uh, VIP liquidity mining pools because our product is a DEX, right? Then uh, we will have a liquidity mining pools, and some of them will have superior APY and APR. And uh, basically, this is where the holders, right, are going to be incentivized, basically, to to provide to provide and lock their liquidity for some time, and uh, they will get superior APY and APR. And also on our launchpad, which we plan to launch later on this year, uh, people will uh, the holders will holders of course of certain amount of the tokens will get access will get uh, access uh, basically into some early early deals that they will be able to pledge to some upcoming projects on uh, DCT DAO launchpad. So in a nutshell, this is the utility. What kind of uh, APY rates can we expect? I can't really comment about this, this yet, uh, but it will be more clear uh, next week uh, because we plan to release our beta uh, version in April. And yeah. uh, this could also come in in beta, which is going to be available in the in the public. We do not have the numbers numbers ready yet, as uh, we plan to have the beta. We plan for the beta to be already cross chain, right? So uh, you know we need to allocate some uh, numbers for uh, in terms of tokens for for each each chain, right? So um, we I don't have the exact number yet. Yeah, I would be uh -huh. I would be lying if I if I tell you something. No, best to tell us, um, you know, that, that, that you don't know yet, um, but we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that. So tell me, how is the community actually responding to the um, operational MVP? I mean, we got a great, great feedback because we built uh, a DEX on uh, Polkadot, uh, Polkadot Moonbeam, 
right uh, uh, early early this year in January, basically released our MVP. So it's running on Polkadot Moonbeam Parachain uh, testnet. So uh, Pol- Moonbeam is not in a mainnet stage, so that's why we, have, we are on testnet right now, so people can test it with uh, the testnet Glimmer uh, tokens. And uh, we are also on Robsten and uh, on some couple of other uh, test chains at the, at the moment. So the response was quite quite good. Uh, however, the disadvantage is that it is not on the mainnet yet. So the real kind of usable product is going to be the beta version, right? Where people can trade the actual actual assets, right? So the community response was good. Even we uh, had a lot of discussion with Moonbeam developers uh, of the protocol. So they they've been supporting us as well. So I think we are on a good way with Moonbeam as a, as a start. And can you tell me more about your planned launch pad? Yeah, uh, so basically after launching the beta version in April, we plan to launch the launch pad uh, in May and uh, it will enable basically new projects to get, you know, listed, to get funding and to get listed uh, directly on the on the decks. So basically this is this is the goal to enable new projects to get this access to the capital. And just finally, you have touched on this, but I want to just make sure that we've got everything covered um, before we say goodbye to you. So um, when will the full cross-chain product actually be launched and what else is it bringing to um, the decentralized exchange space? Correct. So it is scheduled for Q4 of this year, so end of end okay. of this year. But of course, we are trying to over deliver on the on the roadmap, but uh, only the future will see whether we are going to be able to over deliver or or not, and uh, basically it's going to be a truly cross-chain uh, product uh, combining multiple chains. So not just only Polkadot parachains, but multiple distinct, uh, distinct uh, blockchain ecosystems such as Binance Smart Chain, Phantom, uh, Ethereum, you know, Polkadot parachains, and so on and so on. So we do not have the full roadmap for the product ready yet because we are focusing on the beta uh, release. Right, but we will iterate basically and increment the beta uh, based on the response from the from the community, in order to build something the users users really want. Right, so uh, it's an incremental and iterative uh, approach uh, from from this point of view. So it may be more clear after the release on beta. So probably in May, it will be much more clear what exact features of the full product are going to be. Well, Matej, it's been such a pleasure having you on. So thank you so much. And I want to wish you the best of luck for your upcoming launches. Thank you so much.